Hi, say hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. This is Pipe. Who are you? Piper Campbell. You're Piper Campbell? Yes. Yes, you're my granddaughter. Uh -huh. I'm so happy that you're here tonight. Oh, thank you. <laughs> now we're going to do um, what? We're going to do a little dot along with some of my friends, but you're going to have to go up with Bumpa and your mommy, okay? And be quiet while we do this. But I wanted you to say hi to everybody since you're over visiting tonight. Yes. Yes. So yeah. say hi again, and then we're going to say bye. Have fun. Bye. Say bye-bye. Have fun, everybody. Bye, everybody. See you later. Okay. Bye-bye, sweetheart. Bye. All right. Go over to Bumpy. Bye. Hey, everybody. I thought you'd enjoy seeing my little granddaughter. She's over tonight. So I hope the noise is not too much, everybody. Um, but, uh, you know, she wanted to say hi, so I thought it would be fun to have her come in and say hi. Whoops. So I hope the noise is not too much, everybody. All right. I got my iPad muted because we're going to have a lot of lot going on here today. Hey, I'm going to try to get Miranda on and make sure that we've got that working. And so I'm going to ask you guys to just bear with us for just a couple of minutes here while I make sure Miranda can get on. And then I'm really excited about today's event because I know that you, many of you follow Miranda on her YouTube channel. I certainly do. And I just love her design. So I thought it would be great for us to do a little collaboration with her. So give me a minute here and let me try to get her um, online. <clears throat> okay, so Miranda's telling me that the link's not coming through. So I'm going to try it again, you guys. Sorry if you're seeing awkwardness here. Give us just a couple of minutes. I hope you guys are not over anxious. So let me go over to Facebook too and give her the link. <clears throat> this is our first time doing um, a dual collaboration. So we, you know, we got kinks to work out, but hopefully, hopefully you guys are patient with us while we get this going. So let's give a minute for Miranda to join us. So I hope everybody's doing well. Let me see who is on the um, event. Oh gosh, we've got tons of people on the event. Oh my God, Jill, it never does. I, I don't know what the heck. We keep trying all these new things because you know what? We got to push ourselves to be better and to, to learn new stuff, but it takes, it's it can be hard getting it together. That's for sure. Well, we just have a ton of people on the video. So I'm so excited. Um, for you all to join. Let me check back on Miranda and see how she's doing getting in. And hopefully we'll get her online soon. <clears throat> Hi, Sandra. I'm so glad you joined. Thanks for joining, Sandra. I appreciate seeing you and Mary and Linda, Diane, Gwen. Um, I'm really excited to have you all here. So let's hope that we can get Miranda going with us. 
If not, I might have to paint this myself. <laughs> that would be scary. <laughs> I'm just corresponding with Amanda on Facebook here to see if, or Miranda, to see if I can uh, make sure she's she's able to get in. Oh, no, she can't get in. Hmm. All right, I'm going to try to send it in a different way to her. So give me another minute, you guys. Thanks for bearing with us. Okay, I'm hoping <clears throat> that this is going to work. So I sent the link to her a couple of different ways. So hopefully she'll get on. Let me go back on to the chat and just see who's who else is there. Is everybody um, getting ready for the holidays? Are you guys what's what's going on? I I've got Thanksgiving to prepare for and I'm not really quite ready. But how's everybody else doing on holiday preps? I'm going to go back over to the Facebook and see if I can find her and see how she's doing. I'm going to try to invite her again. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm glad you guys are chatting with each other because we're having trouble getting organized here. What I might do is, um, while we're hopefully getting Amanda to join, um, there wasn't a traceable or anything for this particular design. Um, we have some patterns that are available in our Etsy shop, but but for this, we're gonna just draw um, our shape, our Christmas tree shape. So I'm wondering if I can't get you guys started on that and then maybe uh, we'll be able to get Miranda in here soon enough and hopefully, um, get her going. I'm not hearing back from her. So I'm going to go ahead and take you down to my table. And I'm just going to show you the shape that I'm drawing because um, I'm going to do mine on cardstock. Miranda's is on an eight by six uh, canvas, stretch canvas, but I'm going to actually do mine on cardstock. I didn't have um, an eight by six canvas. So, um, and those are, I don't know, I didn't find them locally. So I'm going to go ahead and draw mine and um, I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just draw that together and get started that way. And then when Miranda comes on, maybe we're able to get her, um, get her with us. Okay, let me take you down to the table and we will see what we can do to get this, at least this shape drawn.
okay, I hope everybody can see that okay. Move it there. All right, so this is my, um, <clears throat> my um, uh, six by eight cardstock. And as I said, I'm just using a piece of cardstock. So I'm gonna make sure you guys can see me and you're following along okay. Oh, wait a minute. Ah. <laughs> hey, Miranda. Hi, it is not Hi. working from my phone. So oh. I have to do it from my laptop here. <laughs> okay, that's fantastic. I'm so glad you're on. I was just about, actually I went down to my table. Let me go back up to my face here. Um, because I was going to just get everybody started on drawing a shape while we were waiting for you to try to join. Yeah, um, but now that we're on, we're 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 good. So okay. um, let me let me get started and introduce you, and then Miranda, uh, we'll go ahead and and get started. First okay. of all, I want to thank you for uh, um, agreeing to do this collaboration. I'm so excited to be working with you on this, and I know that. Um, the people that follow us and watch our videos are just thrilled um, to have you on. I know my group has just been really excited about it. So thanks for doing that. I really Thank appreciate you. it. I'm glad you came up with this idea. I'm super excited to do this too, just yeah. minus the technical difficulties that I keep having. <laughs> You know, my group, my group is kind of used to it because I, every time we do one of these, it gets better, but there's always just a little something that goes wrong. So, uh, or it doesn't go perfectly. I'm not going to say wrong because I know we're a bunch of perfectionists, but it doesn't go quite the way we'd like it, but we just have to roll with it and learn Absolutely. It. Yeah. So Miranda, um, tell us a little bit about your background in terms of your painting experience and your dot painting. As far as dot painting, I, um, been doing pointillism since I was really young. And as a kid, actually, my sisters and I, we would paint with nail polish on rocks. <laughs> so we started really young. You know, you have to have something to do in the summers without electronics. So, um, but as I got through high school, there were a lot of art teachers where I just got addicted to pointillism and just enjoying how painstaking it is doing so many dots, but having such an amazing creation come out of dots. It just, it's always been a love of mine. I don't know. I'm just obsessed with it. So, um, but you know, life happens and I haven't painted a lot throughout the years until I started seeing dot painting popping up again and had a little more time when my girls got older. And so now I'm, I'm, dot painting rocks and canvas and everything. Anything I can get my hands on, I want to paint. <laughs> yeah, there's nothing safe, is there, with, with no. us? <laughs> there's, there's no service that's safe. Nope, not even. My <laughs> husband wants me to do his computer, and now he wants me to do a mural in the house, but we're thinking I'm moving. I'm like, no, I don't want to put it on a wall that I'm going to have to leave. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> yeah, that would be heartbreaking if you put all that work into it and then had to leave it. Yes, it would. <laughs> um, well, that's great. Thanks again for, for doing this. Now, we're going to do um, the Christmas tree pattern that you um, that you designed. Okay. Yep. And, yeah. And so I'm going to go ahead and um, move my camera down to my table, Miranda. I don't know if you need to do the same thing. Yes, just I do. And then I wanted to tell you that what I'll do is, as we're going through this, I'll read out maybe comments or questions or something like that to you so that um, you don't have to be watching the screen or anything. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and move my camera down. Okay. And I'm going to follow along with you. I'm trying to see here. <laughs> All right. And I was telling everybody, Miranda, that I'm using a six by eight cardstock because okay. I didn't have a stretch canvas. But I think that's one of the things that's neat is that we can use the different materials that we have, right? We don't have to go buy special for every project. Absolutely, no. Like we said, you know, anything not nailed down, you can. it's free game. <laughs> and so I'm gonna go ahead and be sketching mine in while you're walking us through the, the design. Okay. Well, my plan tonight, I was thinking just in the interest of saving time, <coughs> excuse me, is that I would not do the black, the brown outline of the Christmas tree. Because I know mm -hmm. in the pattern, if you guys have purchased the pattern, we've said to paint the background of the Christmas tree brown. I'm just going to go ahead and trace it right on my black canvas. Just that way, 
in just in the interest of saving time, we don't have to sit here watching paint dry. <laughs> so, okay. and Miranda, I, I don't, I'm, I am, I'm actually going to just draw sort of a, uh, like a triangle shape for the tree. Okay. Um, for those that maybe don't have the pattern, they could just, draw, you know, like draw a shape. And I think you're using a five inch. Yes. A yep. Five this inch. is the five inch, inch traceable. So yep. any kind of like, five inch type triangle design should work out pretty well because that'll give them the opportunity you give you all the opportunity to just fill it in with dots and about the same size design that we're using so i'm just gonna quickly do it with a pencil here because i can't find my chalk and i also have a tool that is quite sharp that i call my etcher and a lot of times i'll use that because that way i don't have to erase anything afterwards Mm -hmm. um, I just kind of scratch it on to the background, but I didn't want to do that on this canvas. I was worried it might rip. <laughs> if I get a little too excited, I might push down too hard, you know. And it's just a rough, rough outline anyway, so. And there we go. I don't know, maybe I have too many lights on. Can you see this? I can, yeah, I can see it good. Okay. How's everybody else? Can you guys see it? I can't see the outline on my video. <laughs> oh, Miranda, they're asking where you live. They know I live in Colorado. How about yourself? Oh, I'm in Ohio up on Lake Erie. So we're having a, a nice rainy day here. <laughs> but it's been pretty chilly lately, it's starting to get to the winter. So I'll be thankful for being inside painting. Yeah. We've had snow already just uh, last weekend. Yes. Yeah, we did too. We've had a, quite a few little bouts of it. It's kind of nasty. <laughs> yeah. Everybody's saying that they can see um, they can see the outline that you've done just fine. Perfect. And good. All right. All right. So six by eight canvas. I have my tree traced on it. And the first thing for this, I'm just going to show the original that I did on just this one is just on black too. So we're gonna start with the garland, just so that is gonna kind of be the first thing we put down and it'll give the white dots a chance to dry so that we can go back to it. But it also kind of helps you give a spacing to your tree. Sorry, I'm not used to looking at the screen and <laughs> trying to figure out how to show it. All right, there we go. So you can put the garland, I, I'm gonna go down one, two, three. If you guys have the pattern, you'll know where to, to put it, but I'm just placing it around towards the top and we're just gonna kind of divide your tree up into three spaces. And it's just an, a simple S shape. Just think of it as a big S. So I'm just starting at one of the branches here with my pencil. And I'm just gonna make kind of like a little S around this way, but then I'm gonna take it actually up to the branch above so that it kind of looks like we have the garland wrapping around the tree. You see that? Mm -hmm. Okay. And the same, let's see, maybe I'll go on this one here and then just bring it up to the branch above. And then on the bottom one, I just did a huge big S. like that. All right. So with those S's down, we're going to start with white, whatever kind of white you have. I think I put titanium white on the list for the pattern, which just happens to be what I have the decor Americana. Actually, they call it snow white with titanium in parentheses. And you can use Dotting tools, brushes. I'm going to use dotting tools tonight just because I think that a lot of people are more familiar with those, the stylus type with the ball on the end. I don't know if you can, yeah, you can see that. Okay. And I'm just using one of the smaller ones. It doesn't have to be specifically the same one that I use, just one of the smaller ends because we want the garland to kind of be dainty. And personally, I usually start right from the center. Let me see, make sure I'm on the screen here. 
I start right in the center because I want the largest of my dots to be in the center. And then as you work your way around, you're going to have to kind of keep dipping it to keep it the same size. But then when you start to get out to the edges here, you're just going to let off a little bit and let the paint run off the tool so that you get the graduated size dots to go down smaller. How's everybody doing? Are you all falling away, uh, falling okay? Yeah, let me know if I'm talking too fast or going too fast. I'm not used to doing this live. And I'm sure there's gonna be bloopers, so be warned. I'm just gonna turn my canvas here because I'm trying to work around the the camera angle. And so I just thought was this was like a popcorn. Does I don't know if anybody ever does popcorn cranberry trees anymore, <laughs> but my girls and I we like to pop popcorn and thread it on string and make our own garland. That was just kind of where I got the idea in my mind to do the popcorn garland idea. Plus when you're on a tight budget, springing for expensive garland every year is not, <laughs> not always feasible. All right, so I'm gonna continue on down to the second set of garland. Are you just using the dotting tools too, Maria? Yeah, I am. Yeah, um, <clears throat> when you and I tested it, we know that when I talk and you talk, we switch back and forth. So I'm gonna kind of stay as silent as I can while you're painting. I have to keep checking to make sure I'm still within view on the screen here. I wish that I could hear other people like we're in the same room. Yeah, that's the one thing about the lives that you kind of have to kind of go to the chat. So I'm going to just take a, since the camera's on me, I'm going to take a look at the chat. Sure. Um, some people are, they're telling us where they're at. Lots of people from around the country, some Florida, another Ohio, Puerto Rico. Ooh, hola. <laughs> hola. And um, Missouri, lots of different um, places that people are located and they seem to be seeing okay. Great. So, So Maria, I had a couple questions today on the video. Um, mm -hmm. People were asking if we do a live video, will it go up as a regular video afterwards? Yeah. Um, once we're finished here, YouTube will automatically process it and it'll be available to anyone who wants okay. to view it. And then Miranda, you and I can talk. I'm gonna try to get it, get you a copy so we can get it over to your channel too. That would be awesome. And if not, we can just link it so that they can find your channel. Yeah. Because I know a lot of people buying the patterns were wondering if they didn't make it to the dot along tonight, if they could do it still at another point in time, or if they're on different time zones, that this isn't exactly convenient for somebody who it would be two in the morning right now. So. <laughs> Thank you. 
All right. So is everybody about the same finishing up on the last white set of garland? I don't want to go too fast, but also I'm slower with the dotting tools. I have to keep going back and dipping more than I'm used to. <laughs> Why don't we give everybody just a chance, Miranda? We'll just give them a chance. I'm still, I'm on my last garland, but I'm not done. Okay. So maybe we just give them a minute to catch up. Perfect. Oh yeah, I see how the camera's switching. I forgot that it was gonna do that. Everybody, let me know how you're doing with uh, finishing up your garlands. I'm just about to close up on mine. How's everybody doing? Got a couple of mine done. Okay, Miranda, I think we can move, we can move on. Okay. All right. So the first actual color we're going to use is the crystal green, which is one of the deco art metallics. Oh, I'm off screen here. Sorry. <laughs> All right. And it's one of the, it's like an emerald glitter metallic green. So any of your green will work. Just a nice dark rich green because we're not going to alternate between multiple colors of green. And I chose to use the largest dotting tool that I have here the last time I did this because it kind of helps bulk up the design a little bit. And I kind of fill in and then leave some spaces for where we want to put the ornaments. So I kind of have an idea in mind. And you can either should we copy exact where we put the ornaments, Maria, or do we want to just well, leave it open? I think for people that are following the pattern, it yeah. might. Yeah. That would help. We, yeah. We put the ornaments and the, you know, and the, uh, the same uh, positions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So I'm going to show this then the pattern here again for the original. Uh, my thing won't focus. I said, be ready for bloopers, right? Technical mm -hmm. difficulties. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if I stop moving here, hang on. There we go. Okay. So we leave a space at the top. So I'm wondering actually then if we should do ornaments first and then it'd be easier for everyone to dot around them. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, because uh, initially I had filled in a bunch of green and then went in, so, but I think it'd be easier to do the ornaments. Yes. Yeah. All right, now that you all just poured green in your palettes, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we switch to gold since we're only going to use that basically at the top. We'll go with some gold here. I have the splendid gold. Doo -doo -doo. Yeah, splendid gold metallics. It shows backwards on my screen. I hope it doesn't for you guys. All right, so we're gonna go to the tippity top of the tree design. And we're gonna do a little swipe type tree top here. Let me make sure I have it on my tree top. Okay. So I'm using one of the smaller ends of the stylus out of one millimeter, I think, if you guys actually have measurements on yours. 
here, I'll draw it out on here just so you can see it, the idea of what we're gonna do. So it's one long stripe at the top. <coughs> and then you're gonna do two off to each side that come into the one large stripe. And then two at the bottom. And then we're just gonna do one big old gold dot underneath all of it afterwards. So one big old stripe. And I like to do these while they're still wet because I find them easier to blend in together, especially if you're only using one color. Sometimes it's hard if you're doing different colors and you're mixing swipes, sometimes you'll get a mixed base and you might have to wait until the, the first ones you put down are dry. But if you're using all the same color, this just kind of helps them blend a little better together. And then for the, the dot, you can use the large dotting stylus just to put a big fat dot there. Like that. Maria, are people saying they can see it all right? I feel like it keeps coming in and out of focus. I think that it, it looks like it's going in and out of focus for me a little bit too. You might have the autofocus on. I see. Um, but um, how's everybody doing? Are you all seeing okay? I just made it worse. <laughs> Gwen asked me which tool did I use for the garland. I'm just using one of my nail daughters, um, Gwen. Part of that set, I think I was using that. Well, for me, it's my larger one, uh, my largest nail daughter. Uh, I think in this pattern, we're going to use all kind of the nail daughters, right, Roman Miranda? Yeah, that was my plan. Just to yeah. figure everybody has most of these tools. Yeah. But they can use whatever they have, too. I mean, it's just a matter of size for sure. small or big dots. Yeah. And, you know, one other thing I wanted to mention, Miranda, because some people were concerned about, you know, having the exact colors. Like, right. I'm not using the exact colors that you're using. I think people use what they have. Absolutely. That, that kind of come close, right, to the design. And I think that, you know, will make them happy and not fret over having the exact stuff. Right. Yeah. I don't think they need to have the exact ones. If you have a blue that's close or, you know, a brown or copper, those type of colors are easy to, any kind of red to add in for the garland, any kind of gold or light brown for the tree topper even that we just did. You could use like a tan or khaki or. Yeah, I'm using yellow. yellow. Yellow, yep. <laughs> uh, Miranda, they are saying it's a little bit in and out of focus, so I don't know. Yeah, it is. Look that way to me, too. Ah! <laughs> oh, Technical no. difficulties. <laughs> See, you guys will have this as a blooper reel, too. We're all friends here, for heaven's sake. Oh, I know. Yeah, I'm not worried about the it. Other, the, you should see some of the other dot alongs. <laughs> There's a blooper reel there, too, for sure. That's awesome. But you know what? I kind of chalk it up to that's what real life is. Exactly. Studio mishaps, spilled paint, all that stuff. Thankfully, my garland was dry. It hit the garland, so. <laughs> oh. Now, see, that's the kind of thing that really does happen in the studio where you will smear your paint. Oh. And that's what's a little hard about dotting on cardstock is that, you know, if you mess it up, you mess it up. Right. That's true. Just have a couple handy for the live. <laughs> yep, for sure. I think. It might be as good as I'm going to get it for here. I don't know. It still doesn't look any better to me. Um, I can see it perfectly fine right now. Okay. Why don't we just keep going? And that way, if um, it gets if it gets out of focus, we'll, we'll let you know. Okay. That works. All right. All right. Moving on. Let's see. Let's go with some copper I have here. And that's the metallics. And we're going to put a couple more ornaments on. And by the way, Miranda, yes. um, Pam says she likes the bloopers. <laughs> 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 so 
Well, she's going to get plenty of that. <laughs> I, I have to admit that's one of my favorite parts that they have now on like on red box movies and stuff. I like the blooper reels too. Okay. So it's nice to know that they're real, you know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna put my first ornament right here in the hook of the garland. And I'm using copper and I'm using the largest dotting tool. So the three millimeter big round ball. And then I just flipped it around on the original design and I did a three little dots underneath it just to make it seem different rather than the normal Christmas balls that you have hanging on your trees. And let's do another one on the next row down I did on the garland as well, right in the hook. What's Sometimes. nice about using Oop. the nail daughters is that you can get different sizes. That's true. Yep, that's true. I usually, with the brush, too, I know a lot of people are having a hard time, but after years of using a brush, I, I do the same brush and use all different sizes. It's just a matter of painting it into a circle. But on this one, too, I'll sometimes steal paint even, so I don't have to keep going back to the palette. I'll sometimes steal paint right from the dot that I already made. Mm -hmm. and just use that in the design as well yeah <clears throat> just because i'm lazy <laughs> i don't want to keep going back to the palette <laughs> all right and so we'll do one more down on the bottom left under the hook here the thing with these dotting tools too i know this one's like a three millimeter but you can still make the dots bigger too just by pushing the paint into a bigger circle yeah. so if you want larger ornaments and you get enough paint on it or even you can double dip and then add it again. <coughs> All right, one, two, three, copper. All right, so I think I'm gonna head on to the red. So I have festive metallic red here. So, but whatever red you have, you can use. And we're going to use the large end of the dotting tool again. And we're going to go, let's see, just in between the first and second garland, just to just before the branch starts to swing out, if you're doing the pattern. And I'm just gonna get a ton of paint on it and do a big fat dot. Now, if you want to do a little tiny um, gold on top or yellow, since you already have gold in your palette um, from the treetop, I did do that on the, the pattern just to make it look like it has a little hanging section. So using one of the smaller dotting tools while it's still wet, I just started above the design a little bit and dragged it into my dot just to kind of make it look like it has a tassel or something hanging on it. But you don't have to do that. That was just what I did on the, on the design. So if you were looking to go to the pattern and do the same thing, that's what it was. So it has to be the wet on wet. So you're just dragging one into the other. All right, so I think another red one we'll do over to the right below the copper one that we did. Again, it's the same, the large dotting tool. Big old dot. And then with the gold, I'm just going to grab a little bit on the small end of one of the styluses and start above it like you're going to do a dot and then just drag it into the ornament. OK. 
Okay, and one more down here on the middle of the lower garland. And again with the gold, and then I just drag it on in. How's everybody doing? Mine still looks blurry. Oy. Oh well, I don't wanna move it again because I'm afraid it's gonna fall on the wet paint. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Chat, chat us, give us a little chat and see how, if you're following along okay or you need to be hard for them to type. <laughs> and Miranda, one thing I also wanted to mention, there is a little delay. I think we noticed that when we were testing, there's always a, just a little bit of a delay. Um, That's right. I did forget about that. People are saying that they like the gold tassel on the red ornament. That's a neat effect. Cool. And people are saying they're doing good, Miranda. Yay, mm -hmm. I'm so glad. We're ready to move on. All right, let's go for blue then. <laughs> and I think too, I told you this Maria already, but <laughs> I honestly couldn't remember which blue I used on the pattern. So. Uh -huh. That is why it says true blue and the icy blue. Because <laughs> I quite oh. frankly I forgot which one I used. So, okay. so I'm gonna use the true blue. And I'm using a peacock teal because that's what I had handy. Nice. All right. So the first blue ornament I have is right up here under our gold. Hey Miranda. Can Miranda, yep. stop for one sec. So uh, people are asking about seeing the tree because I switched it so that you're the presenter. So it's not switching back and forth when I talk. So Jill, can you see two little images on the bottom of your screen? Because you should be able to switch back and forth. But we hadn't tested that. So I'm not sure if that's actually working. So Jill, see if you can, if you see two, uh, our, like our names or something on the screen and that might work. Otherwise, we'll switch back in a little bit and I'll show you mine. Okay, sorry, Miranda. No, you're fine. I think it'd be good for them to see yours too, because you have the one where it was sketched out as the triangle so they can kind yeah. of see difference without. Yeah. All right. All right. So blue and I'm going to go right here below the gold and above our first garland. And you can use actually, you know what, maybe. You can use your gold or your white. I believe in the pattern I used silver, which I don't even have here in my pile that I didn't prepare. So I have a slate gray that I can use, but you don't have to. It's just like we did with the gold on the red ornament, I did with silver on the blue ornaments. So silver or gray, or you can even use your white if you want to do the little swipe into your ornament like we did with the red ones. Okay, and I'm showing them mine just so they can see it. I switched to me just so they can take a look at how mine's coming along. Perfect. And then I'm going to, everybody get a look. Let me know when you've had a look at, at mine, and then I'll switch back to Miranda so she's she's on presenter. Okay. All right, so you, they've had a chance to look at that. Okay. 
So let's see, where is my other one? Is down here below the second garland, about midway up the garland, is another blue dot. And I'm using the largest dotting tool again. And like we did with the gold, I just have a slate gray instead of silver like the pattern, but I'm just using the slate gray and dragging slate gray into the ornament. And then one more blue out here on the end of our bottom garland. How many of you guys are painting along with us tonight? And how many are just watching and laughing? No, I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is a sweet, these are a sweet group of people, Miranda. They're so forgiving. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I love this art community. I'm really, I'm just amazed at what a blessing everyone is to one another throughout the groups and everything. People yeah. helping each other out, sh sharing links, sharing design ideas. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, it's a good group of people. So we've got Gail who's dotting along and Elizabeth, Linda, Mary, Barbara, Joyce can't. She wishes she could. Some are some Bar Donna's just watching, but she's gonna came in late. She's loving it. <laughs> Janine's loving it. Uh Randy she, Randy says she in she's she's dotting along, but she's laughing too. Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, awesome. see, I told you there'd be someone out there. This, this is the, this good. is the Miranda Maria comedy show, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I'd rather okay. it be lighthearted like that, anyway. Yeah, for sure. Lori's having fun and she's dotting along. Barbara's dotting along. That's yeah. fantastic. We love it that you're dotting along. <clears throat> Yeah, this is awesome. I, was, I wasn't sure about live, although, you know, when you're doing the videos, it's kind of like you're talking to nobody anyway. So you kind of yeah. have to think about it like, oh, I'm talking to people. They're going to hear this. I just run through like, what am I going to say? Well, I'll just talk about what I'm thinking, <laughs> which who knows what will <laughs> pop out then. But <laughs> All right. How is everybody doing as far as up to the point of the blue ornaments? Everyone says there, there's a ton of people that are dotting along. Um, so I think I think everyone's doing pretty good, it sounds like. I think we're ready to move on. Move on, yeah. Awesome. All right. So I think we shall do the little snowflakes now. So it'll be the white again. And if you're white on your palette, you might have to report again. Sometimes it gets a little tacky. I know sometimes when I'm dotting, I'll just lay a wet paper towel over it and that helps. Or I have a palette where I can actually put a cover on it. But when we're doing something like this, obviously I can't run and get a wet paper towel and whatnot. But just pour a little bit more so that it's not tacky. Because sometimes when you use the tacky paint, I don't know if you guys have already had this happen, but I'll go to pull up after you make a dot and it'll leave a tail and just drip on your painting or smear or just do nasty things to your work so <laughs> just a, a heads up i did pour more so the first snowflake i think i have right here at the tail of the garland and i'm using one of the smaller tools and i actually this one i i have it's bent i don't know if you can see it from there but i bend a lot of my tools because the paintbrush i use is on an angle and I find, especially with the videos, I find it easier to be able to see what I'm doing when I'm dotting. But so it's just a, a simple, I guess, star pattern. So I just do one dot in the middle that's a little bit bigger. And then I flip it around to a smaller end. And I grab the paint from that one dot and do two up. 
and then two down. And so it's kind of getting smaller as you go. And then on your 45 degree angle, not the 90, just the 45. So it's in between, just do two that way. And then two towards the bottom. And then the same thing on the other side. I'm still just grabbing from the middle because I don't want to go over to my palette. So it just kind of makes a little star snowflake shape. And you can do them any way you want, obviously, but that's just how I did them for the pattern. All right, and the second one is above the second garland, just over the curve, the bend of the garland. The other thing, Miranda, is to keep your tool clean when you're doing this much dotting. Yes. That paint builds up so fast. That's a really good point. Yeah, I have multiple paper towels here that I just keep wiping on. That's a good point. I forgot to mention stuff like that. That's a helpful hint. <laughs> So again, I just did the big one in the center and then two little ones up and down and then on your 45 degrees. And then the last snowflake that I did is down between the two garlands near the bottom. I guess pretty much right straight up and down over your trunk, just to the bottom right of your blue ornament there. I got a bump on my canvas here, sorry. You know, one other thing, a tip, Miranda, you um, were telling me how you like to prep your canvases. Oh, that's right, I forgot about that. Um, yeah, I bought rollers from the dollar store. They're just little sponge rollers that look like a mini size roller that you would use to paint your walls in your home. And they actually work really well so that you don't get lines. I know a lot of people were saying they were having trouble with, especially if they use the high gloss varnish, that they get lines in their canvas. So if you're leaving a big background and you have lines, it looks, it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> it looks like big wrinkles in your canvas. But the rollers, if you just, I actually just pour the paint right on my canvas and roll it out even, then usually one coat of the matte black like from DecoArt, they're matte black. I don't ever have to put more than one coat on it. It just smooths out really nicely and presents a really nice background to paint upon. Wait, I'm sorry, which paint was that, Miranda? I use the DecoArt and it's just the matte finish one, like none of the shiny enamel. Oh, yeah. Not the, um, sometimes they're multi-surface. Some of those are shiny. Yeah, I use the chalk paint, the DecoArt chalk paint. Oh, I haven't tried that ever. That sounds like a fun adventure. Yeah, I use that one. Got that, that matte finish. I'm looking for them, you know, because otherwise the chalk lines, like you say, they don't adhere well to the paint or right. <clears throat> are the you know? So I like to go with a matte finish also. Yeah, and then afterwards, you know, once you have everything painted, you can do high gloss for your varnish or your seal coat. And some people are doing resin now, and they have a top coat from DecoArt. I mean, there's all sorts of options now. So. All right, so we have one, two, three snowflakes done. Okay, I'm just showing everybody what mine's looking like so far on the triangle, and then I'm gonna let them take a peek at that and switch back to you. Okay. This is so much fun to be able to paint with you, Miranda. Yeah, this is great, I'm loving it. It's nice to bounce ideas off of people too. Oh, there we go, I got it focused better. I'm trying to change my lighting to see if that would help, but it doesn't seem to. Christine is saying, thanks for the tip on the rollers. Do you like that better than a sponge brush? You know, I do sometimes <laughs> still use the sponge brushes. Um, I don't use the flat. Let me see if I have one close by. I'll use the the sponge brushes like these ones, the larger ones. Yeah. Um, 
but I will not, I don't use the bristle brushes anymore. I do like the roller better, I think. And especially with a larger canvas, it's so much faster and you don't spend all this time trying to flatten out, you know, where you've done the stripes. You don't have to blend it into one another. So I, I, I prefer it. Yeah, I actually think the roller is a good idea because I think that even those brushes, the, the foam brushes, there's sometimes a raggedness on the edge. Yes. Um, or a stiffness that creates the, um, you know, creates the ridges as well. Right. And yeah. I also use um, uh, an automotive, actually an automotive sponge. Um, do you know what those are? They're really fine sponges that they use to apply wax and stuff. And they're no. really, really fine grained. And they work great if you apply um, that, uh, you know, your varnish with that method. So I like that too. Wow, I don't think I've ever heard of that. Is it? It's just called an automotive brush, or is it? it it's not a brush. It's actually a sponge. Sponge. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an automotive sponge, and it's just really super, super fine grain. Cool. And so I like to use that too. Um, so let's see. Um, oh, Barbara's saying that. She just, you're going to, you're going to have us all out bending our styluses. She said she bent her styluses uh -huh. with some pliers and she really likes that, the way that uh -huh. works. Yeah. I, you know, I did a video on it a long time ago because everybody was asking how I got them bent, but I did it just with needle nose pliers. Yeah. And, and a couple <laughs> people were saying they had a hard time because they were breaking the tips off of them uh, when they were doing it. So I, I. I'm not sure how much they spent on their dotting tools. So I, I would caution that. <laughs> yeah, they will break for sure. Yeah. If, or if you keep bending it back and forth, like that was how I got my etcher. This one here has a really sharp point on the end. That's where mm -hmm. I usually sketch my designs with. Yeah. And that actually used to have a ball on it. I, I broke it right off. But, yeah. you know, they have some of those dotting sets because I, I actually have dotting sets from my polymer clay work and they have some you have to look at the set that have a needle nose um, tip that come with that needle nose type tip like that. Okay. <clears throat> so that it's already on an angle. No, it's not on an angle. It's just the really f like your etcher. It's oh, got a oh, oh. really sharp e end, like gotcha. a, like a sort of like a needle end. Yeah. It makes really tiny points. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's for sure. I also use, I, you know what you guys, I have so many things from my polymer clay days. I also use like those double ended knitting needles for those of you that might have done that. Um, I'll put here. Let me go over to you should switch and show. Yep. Yeah. So see, I have these. This is because I use them for sculpting for the polymer clay. But see how they have a fine tip or even just a regular like knitting needle has a great tip. If you need to have really super fine dots, these little knitting needles, they're really inexpensive and they're, you can find them at like a Joann's or someplace like that. But if you need to get something with a really fine tip, those are great too. All right, Miranda, we're back to you. Okay, doke. <coughs> All right. So I think now it probably would be good if we grabbed our red, um, whatever red you want to use. I just used a darker red. This one is Santa red. So this is going to be for the cranberries on the garland. And with this, you're going to go for probably the smallest dotting tool that you have. And we're going to go in between all the little white dots that we did. But it doesn't really matter which one you start on, but I always have a habit, like I said, of starting in the center of the S curls and the garland. And I just do a smaller dot and it's like you're connecting the white ones. It starts to look kind of like a chain link. And I love this effect. I kind of use this a lot with a lot of my larger canvases. So you need it, I guess if you use the larger dotting tool, if you use a larger dot for your garland, you're gonna need a little bit bigger than I'm using because I used the smallest end that I had. And then this is the etcher side. But then you're not 
trying not to cover up the whole thing of white, but just connecting in between the space. So you're covering the black in between if there was any. And if not, then you're just connecting the white dots. And the same when you get to the end here, you're gonna have to let the paint kind of run out on your tool because you're gonna want them to go a little bit smaller to fit into the white dot spaces that you had. You know, as I'm doing this, you could also use this to do candy canes on your tree. The same idea. Oh yeah, that's a great idea. I know this group and they're gonna come out with all kinds of different um, <laughs> embellishments and enhancements and. That's good. I, I love it when people take something and run with it and get inspired and make their own designs. I think that's yeah. just, that's what art is all about. It's awesome. Yeah. Plus, I think it's, I think sometimes it's more difficult following what someone else has done, following a pattern. I don't know about you, but I sometimes just willy nilly pick some colors and then I just go at it. And especially with the mandalas, I just kind of paint whatever I'm feeling at that point. Well, let's go here. This rock's too small to do a big design here. Let's go small dots or whatever. But if I'm, if I was trying to follow a pattern, I, in my head, I feel like that would be more difficult, even just trying to copy my own designs. <laughs> yeah, I think it depends. I mean, I do both. I tend to design things a little bit first, you know, at least rough sketch them or something like that if it's a more complex design. Mm -hmm. um, but I do like translating them into patterns because I know a lot of people, um, you know, who, especially if they're getting started, they want to... Um, you know, they want to try out and see how it works with a pattern. So I like kind of converting to a pattern as well. Yeah, I really appreciate your expertise in that area because I've never, never, ever translated something into the pattern, which Maria is the one that made the pattern that's on my Etsy also. She did an awesome job and I'm so grateful for all her help with that because I have no clue. Technical difficulties <laughs> it's like be way beyond me. <laughs> I just paint. I don't do all that computer work and drawing on the computer and it came out amazing. So I think something like that, like it's it's like a tool. You just get used to using it, you know. Yeah. Well, I'm still adding my cranberries. Yeah, I am too. <laughs> Sometimes I can't. We used to make those cranberry garlands when we were growing up. I haven't made it in a, done them in a long time, but that was always an awful lot of fun. I think it was good too as a child learning to work with your hands a little bit, you know, just having that opportunity to make something mm -hmm. like making ornaments and making garland. It just felt like we were really a part of Christmas that way. Yeah. yeah. I used to do that with my kids when they were growing up. We always had a Christmas project. And now that they're adults, they won't do it with me anymore. So now I got to get my little piper going on that, so we we can um, we can make things together. Do any I, of you guys have a family tradition um, of making something for the holidays with your family? Let 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 us know in the comments. It's such a fun tradition to get the kids involved in making something. My sister and I were just talking about that the other day, actually. It's funny. And then you get into baking, you know, as you get older, you get into baking with your mom. And my mom always made these. We had always had extra dough left over from the pies. So she would always make these cinnamon rolls where it was just cinnamon and sugar and water. And we'd roll them up and crisp up the dough. And that would be the, the one thing we were allowed to eat before Christmas. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's that's nice. The things you remember about working with your mom or your grandma or someone, you know, someone else in your family. Those are special times. They are. I miss those times. Now, my girls and I, we make thumbprint cookies and candied bacon because my husband's family, they're they're they like bacon. So we get to make bacon candy and it comes out so yummy. I, I eat half of it before it even makes it to the family. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the beauty of being the one that makes it is you get to eat it first
when you first started, started um, dotting, Maria, did you hold your breath when you did little dots? Um, not that I remember. Oh. I held my breath a lot, but not, not necessarily with the small dots. I was always afraid, honestly, to get the first dot because that center dot, I don't know why it is so intimidating. You want it to be perfectly spaced and perfectly placed. Right. And, um, I so I always I always hold it on the first the very first center dot. Hey, somebody's asking what candy bacon is. <laughs> <laughs> it's delicious. That's what it is. No. <laughs> um, well, you take like a thick center cut bacon mm -hmm. and we mix a bunch of spices like cinnamon, nutmeg, ground clove, brown sugar, dried mustard. Um, a little bit of cayenne pepper for our spicy people in our family. And we mix that all up and then you dip the bacon in it. And then we put the bacon on, um, I actually twist it. And then we, we kind of attach it to a, a baking rack on top of a cookie sheet. And then we bake the heck out of it at like 425, I want to say but it comes out kind of gummy, gooey, just spicy and sweet. And to be honest, before I met my husband, I never ate bacon. I hated it. <laughs> oh. But there's so many other ways of cooking it other than just, you know, frying it to a crisp or getting bacon bits. And this is one way where I definitely will eat way too much. You know, uh, will you will you put the recipe um, for us so we can um, we can all try to put it down? <laughs> I think that I where could I post that? I'm trying to think. Well, if you if you write it out, we can post it on our pages or okay something okay. like that. I can post it in the group and stuff. That would be so much fun. Now, <laughs> people are telling us about their um, their traditions, so I want to. Um, oh, Mary, are you you put your finger in the? Oh dear. But you know what? It happens every time. Did you recover? Were you able to recover, Mary? <laughs> um, let's see what people are saying about what their traditions were, though, because we have. So let's see. Uh, <clears throat> gingerbread house. They yearly Donna, her family does a yearly gingerbread house. Jill on Thanksgiving when the kids were little playing bingo and the kids would always win presents. That's, that's so fun. And then Lori says both of my grandchildren, 13 and 14, dot with her. They go to their sister's house on the lake and pick rocks and then come home and dot. Oh. Gail says her kids are all grown now, too. Did popcorn and cranberries when they were little. Nice memories. And Christine says they always play Monopoly after we eat. That's so that's so great. They um, it, it's um, it's so special to have those memories that we create with our kids and I love being able to paint painted with the kids when they were little and paint with them now Miranda you've got you've got little ones you guys paint a lot together or my middle daughter we do yeah she likes to paint a lot my oldest daughter is more into sketching and mm -hmm. she is like her father they can just draw whatever you put in front of them basically so I can't draw a person's face to save my life but she's drawing whole bodies and comic strips and oh, wow. characters and you know like pokemon all those type things she can draw but yeah our middle daughter i mean our middle child um she loves to paint so she's the one who likes to get messy with me and help me pick out rocks and <laughs> and i'm sure if i let the one-year-old have a paintbrush he would go all over the place and help paint but i'm not sure that i want him to do that yet <laughs> no yeah he's a how old about two or three He's one and a half right one, now. He'll be two yeah. in February. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, um, you, missed, uh, you missed my little granddaughter, Piper. She was on at the beginning of the show and she loves to paint. Oh. She, she's going to be three in December. And so um, we're just getting started with the painting. So it's really, really fun. And Mary, it sounds like Mary's fine. Mary recovered after okay. her incident with the ornaments. <laughs> so that's really good. Was she able to paint over the background again to fix it? I don't know. I don't know what she did to fix it, but she says, oh, yeah, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, great. Are we, uh, how are we doing? Are we ready to move along? I think so. Yeah. I think everybody's caught up and ready. Cool. All right. So the last thing we have for ornaments are the little icicles. I'm going to okay. show it. On, I'm going to show it on the main ones here just so we can get an idea quick here. 
And the icicles are actually a similar design to the garland. I don't know, that looks blurry to me. So like right here, what I did was I took a light blue. Can you see that? It looks really blurry on mine. Um, yeah, it's a, you know, sometimes white when it's close like that, it gets, it, it sort of blurs into each other, but I can yeah. see the icicles. I just can't see necessarily the definition. Okay. So they're a combination of two different colors. So it's silver and blue. Or if you want to do white and blue, you can do that too. It's just a light blue. And then we're going to let those dry and then do in between the light blues like we did with the garland with the silver or white. So we're gonna put the blue down first. And I just have, I think I used shoreline, but you can use any kind of light turquoise, light blue. It's just to kind of give that wintry feeling. Yeah, I'm just mixing a little bit of my peacock teal and some white to get a lighter blue. That works too. All right, so the first icicle is up on the first branch to the left of our gold. And it's just a matter of using one of the smaller dotting tools. And I think, do you guys call it walking out the dots? I think that's what I'm yeah, saying. Yeah, walking okay. the dots. Uh -huh. That's what I see people calling it. So I don't know. I call them, you know, whatever. And it's just graduated in size. So you go from large and then you let the paint run off the tool so you're going down to a smaller dot and it doesn't matter how many it just depends on how long you want your icicle to be so i think i did five and then down on the, off the first loop of our garland is another one And keep them decently close enough so that you can do the in-between dots with them. But they don't have to be touching. And then off to the right here, off this branch where the garland swoops out. And then on the bottom garland, just below it. I'm talking too much. The paint's drying on my tool too fast. <laughs> <laughs> and then one more down here, just above our trunk. And then just off to the left by our other copper ornament, just to the right of our copper ornament, kind of in the nook of the curl of our garland here. And a lot of times when I'm doing the ideas in my head, I just kind of look at the spacing. And it, you know, it doesn't have to be perfect because I have two copper ornaments here. I mean, I just didn't want it to look too bulky with one color on one side too much. So just to kind of space it out haphazardly. So we'll let that dry. And then we'll go back in between later on with our silver or our white. It's funny, the temptation that I get to go off with this because you do you get like oh we get inspired oh I want to do candy cane now or I want to do this now but I'll stick to it for now and then change it later <laughs> <laughs> all right so I think what we should do is our trunk area next so you're going to need the burnt umber first and then have a lighter color or the espresso I think I said the rich espresso is one of the metallics for a highlight afterwards but we can't do that until it's dry so we'll get this raw dark umber dark brown one of the darker ones down first
And I used the large dotting tool, large end of the largest one, so the three millimeter. And it's just gonna be the swipes like we've been doing. So kind of the similar to the gold, only it's gonna be longer. And you're gonna drag it across the stump or across the trunk. So if you have your tree drawn out, I just did from the top corner and then dragged it as far as I could get it to try to get to the bottom. But see my paint ran out. All you have to do is just grab a little bit and continue to drag it or you can flip your tool to the smaller end, re-dip it and then drag the paint out. I don't know, I think I, like you just double dip, double dip if you need to. <laughs> so just from the top of one side, and this is okay, it's the same color, so we're dragging wet through wet, which shouldn't cause too much of a problem. Hey Joyce, thanks for joining. Um, catch the replay, thanks for, thanks for dropping in. We really appreciated you joining us. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. All right. All right, I'm gonna show them how mine's coming along. Okay. For those that might've done the sort of triangly one. This is how mine's looking. Okay, Miranda, we're back to you. Okay, so now that we have everything kind of delineated as to where it needs to be, now we can go back to our green. And if yours is not too dry, mine is, well, maybe it, it's okay. It's back to the crystal green or the emerald green or some kind of dark green that you have. And you're just going to start filling in with large, large dots, just kind of haphazardly around so it doesn't look like you're drawing out lines with it or anything. And the only time I, I let it get really small was when you get sort of towards the outer edge of your branch areas. And sometimes too, I'll just go through and just put a bunch of huge ones everywhere and then let those dry and then go back over it and fill it in with smaller. Or if you want to highlight with a different tone green, you can do that as well. So maybe do like a really dark emerald green and then go through with like a lighter holiday green or something like that. Or I don't know what the names of the, the other brands are, but <laughs> if you're using deco art, then. And even then, Maria, I don't know if you know, they're, they're switched, they've switched and discontinued a lot of their paints. Oh yeah. oh yeah. I used to use only the crafter acrylics until I started oh. getting the Americanas and they discontinued and retired a, a bunch of different colored paints. So they actually have a chart that you can go to to mix to figure out the colors that they used to have for the retired colors. Mm -hmm. So I found that helpful, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, I never yeah, I used the crafter one, one, but I couldn't find them like, like local. local. Yeah, I think my local store was like a mom and pop type where there was only four or five of them open in the area out here. And then they get started expanding and then Michaels actually bought them. So now they're switching over all their product line. But I think like the crafter acrylics, they might have been sitting on the shelf for a while. I don't know, because some of them, they I've talked to Decor, they said they haven't made them. They retired them a while ago. <laughs> oh, wow. So like I have a luscious lemon, which is this really pale lemon that I absolutely love. And I only have one bottle left, but they don't make it anymore. And they they were surprised that I had even found it. But that's the thing too. It's a decent quality paint that it can last in a bottle for that long and just still pop it open and have it be perfect for dotting. So I know a lot of people too, they use golden. Have mm -hmm. you tried tried that brand at all? Yeah, it's yeah, just it's pricey. pricey. 
Yes, <laughs> I did find that, but I also found it to be a lot thicker. I had to add a medium to it in order to get it to the consistency where I felt comfortable doing dots with it. Mm -hmm. They sent me a couple of their samples, but it has great coverage too. You don't have to do too much to it, but. So I'm just dotting away here, filling in. I don't know if anybody has any questions or anything too, you can pop those up. Although I'm sure everybody's painting if they're painting along. Yeah, it gets kind of silent sometimes when we, we get painting. Yeah. <laughs> Blah. I had a goober. Uh oh. That's all right. That's what I get for using the paint that was sitting here getting tacky. <laughs> it's all right. I just swirled it into a bigger dot. A lot of people have been asking too how we get them to look 3D, but I think that it's just the amount of paint sometimes, especially with the metallics. They're they're a nice thick paint, and mm -hmm. I I just overload everything, especially my brushes. I just mm -hmm. overload it so much to the point where it comes out in a big heap. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing I've noticed with the metallics, especially I don't know if any of you have tried the Extreme Sheen. I use I use deco art paints, but the extreme sheen. Um, I'm not sure if other brands have this too. They're very thick and stringy. And you don't want to apply a medium to them necessarily because they lose their the with the mica that's in the um, metallic, uh, you can lose it. Um, but you have to be careful. So pull your, you know, your tool straight up and then both from the palette, and then when you drop it on your substrate. Um, you know, just take care and take your time. They sent me a couple of those to try. I haven't gotten around to it yet. I was just looking at it. Gorgeous. They're Are gorgeous. They? Gorge oh, yes. Like, that's what I'm going to use on, on the tree that I do next Monday. Ooh, great. I'm going to be using the Extreme Sheen, and it has a glow. I was looking at some of the projects that they had people do with them, and they do. They look really, really shiny, and it looks like it says it cures to a hard, shiny finish, too. So it's kind of like, like when you're doing enamels mm -hmm. or nail polish. To get, get that shell. Yeah, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful paint, but I had to go real slow because of the string. And just how thick it is, <clears throat> but it's gorgeous. Did you just use the dotting tools, or what did yeah. you use? Yeah, I use the I use those, uh, you know, um, crystallite hooks usually, the acrylic okay. tools. Crochet is it the? I don't yeah, know what the hooks. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's another thing that was nice because I mean I had those already because of course that's another craft that I did at one point. <laughs> I learned how to crochet from my grandma, so. I have all that kind of stuff. That's fantastic that you have the patience for all that. I, I don't have the patience for sewing or crocheting or any of that. I, 
I tried it when, when my oldest was a baby and she used to just crawl around and pull all the knitting out. And I just, I said, I'm done. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> my mother-in-law really, she's amazing. I mean, we, I brag about her all the time, but we can go into a movie. I mean, a pitch black movie. We went to see Pirates of the Caribbean and she went in with nothing started and her knitting bag. And she came out with like, I, I, I exaggerate and I say like three sweaters, but you know, she came out with full projects done in the dark in the movie theater. And it just amazes me that she just works with her hands so much and she's been doing it for so long. She can just whip out a sweater in a movie. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It probably was like mittens or a scarf or something. I'm not really sure, but but she comes out with full projects. It just amazes me. She doesn't even have to look at it. <laughs> My mom's the same way with even a sewing machine. She can be talking to me and sewing something at the same time. Just like, man, I, I wouldn't be able to take my eyes off it or have the patience to do it. What about the rest of you guys? Do you do a lot of other crafts and things too? I'm sure most of you do. What other what other kind of craft type things do you do? Yeah, I've seen a lot of people are getting into the, actually somebody else had to tell me the name of them, the diamond dots. Oh yeah. They're really pretty. I'm not starting another one. I'm not starting no. another. I'm not, <laughs> no, I gotta, <laughs> I, have to, I have to restrain myself. Yeah, although I have looked very hard at them because Michael sells them now. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> I haven't actually seen them in person. I just saw like YouTube videos of people doing them or Instagram clips. Mm So we've got people out there who have Lori's does Kumi Kumi Himu uh, crochet and beadwork, and um, Janice does some scrapbooking. Sue's Sue does some crochet and needle felt, all kinds of crafts. Gail knits, crochets, cross stitch, paints, draws, and sews. Pam makes jewelry. Mary V loves the diamond dots and crochet, needlepoint, and beading. Janice does craft shows. So yeah, I mean, I think. Um, uh, lots of us take the techniques that we learned from those other crafts and or even the tools like I use my sculpting tools right <laughs> or the patience yeah or the patience for it mm -hmm. I you used guys to are really tool. creative yeah I used to do toll painting and that's where we did the swipes call them the comma strokes I think I mentioned that to you oh that's right yep yep but um, lots of different things I think all of us, we just love the color or the texture or the pattern, you know, of all these different things. Well, and the combination of something when you create it too, and the finished product, it just, it's like amazing. Like it's from dots. This is from dots. How do you, you may, we're making a Christmas tree from dots. <laughs> yeah, that's neat. It is. It's cool. I think it's just amazing. The diamond dot tool. I was looking at that, That I think I might need glasses after working on one of those I think Mary might have been the one who told me what what it was actually called what the tool yeah or oh, what they know. what they actually were cuz I had no clue I think I said something about it on one of my videos I'm like I have no idea what they are but people are making pictures out of little jewels <laughs> oh yeah I don't know what the tools are called My kids, when they were little, had these foam mosaic type pictures where you peel off little tiny, tiny dots of stickers of foam. And then they would make up like a kind of like a paint by number. It tells you where to place them. Uh huh. And they used to love doing those. And I liked them because there was no mess. There's no glue. There's no like they're all stickers on a piece of paper. They can do it in the car. <laughs> All right, so I'm getting to the point now where I've 
kind of bulked it up enough with the large dotting tool that I would switch to the smaller one just to kind of start filling in the, the blank spaces around. And I don't know about you, Maria, do you like switch around all the different sp spaces on a canvas to let certain sections dry as you work? Yeah. I find that easier. And sometimes I drag my hand through it too, unfortunately, but I'll spin my canvas and keep moving because I want to let certain sections dry. And Yeah, I definitely have to move my canvas uh, to keep my hands out of the paint. I'm going to switch over to mine just to show everybody what this one's looking like. Perfect. It's looking beautiful. Yeah. So here's mine. I, I did the triangle. So I'm going to, on the outside edges, I'm kind of going outside just a little bit to give it a little bit of, um, you know, movement on the outside. But otherwise, um, you know, that's a simple shape. So. Yeah, and that way too, if they didn't have the traceables, that's an easy way to do the design. Mm -hmm. So one of the things too, if you have the actual branches and stuff, to, you just want to make sure that you're pushing the color out to the ends because when you erase the lines, you want to make sure you still have the shape of the tree. So oh, just that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, dotting on the line, you mean you need to get enough dots there to give it some definition. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, rather than actually just dotting outline the outline, you mm -hmm. know, just make sure you fill it enough to exactly give it definition. Thank you for putting words there that I didn't have. <laughs> See, that's where I would have had a blooper reel or gone back to it and dubbed over. And <laughs> what do I really want to say here? How's everybody holding up? I think we've been going now at least an hour, right? Um, an hour and a half. An hour and a half. <laughs> <laughs> How's everybody doing? Oh, Gail, she's the one that told you about the diamond dots. Oh, thank you, Gail. Sorry. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I said it, and I was like, I have no idea what I'm talking about. They put little jewels down on, on a <laughs> paper or a board, and they make awesome designs. Diamond dots. It sounds pricey. Yeah, it does. You know, though I have watched some of those videos too, because I can't help myself. I watch, <laughs> I watch all kinds of things, um, and um, I think now that's where you would have to have a lot of patience. I think because those things are tiny, tiny, and there's got to be a bazillions of them. But the paintings are beautiful in the end. So, Gail, are have you done some of the di um, diamond dot painting? Uh-oh. 
Miranda, can you hear me? Hmm. Can Jill, can you hear me? Let me know uh, which one of us. It's, it looks like Miranda's maybe frozen. Let me know if you guys can still see me. Yes, you can see me. And here can't see. Okay, I'm gonna go over um, to me. Can you see my? Um, can you see me? Okay. Yeah, I think. I think we lost Miranda. Um, I'm going to go over to Facebook and see if I can connect with her. Let me go tell her that we lost her. Yeah, she's telling me on Facebook that hers froze. So I'm gonna, let me tell her to see if she can rejoin. Okay, um, I'm gonna let her try to rejoin and I'm just gonna keep, um, keep painting along guys um, so we can keep going with this. And I'm sorry about that. So you can, okay, you can see mine and you can hear me. Okay, I'm just going to keep going. So I really like the way this is this is turning out, even though I have, have a little bit different shape. Um, I think it's turning out fine. And I think that's part of the fun of this kind of artwork is that there's, you know, lots of possibilities. You don't have to necessarily have or do exactly the way, you know, someone else does it. So I'm just keeping, to, I'm just continuing to fill in here. Now I'm not using a metallic. I'm using, um, I think this is called, uh, let's see, this is called Holly Green <coughs> that I'm using. And I am noticing that um, as it dries, it's drying a little bit dark on this black background. I know that when Miranda did her original piece, she actually painted the tree brown and and had it on a black. Um, Sorry. Oh, okay, good, good, good. Let me go back to you, Miranda. <laughs> I have no idea what happened. I don't know. Sometimes our internet has these fun little brownouts. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, so we're just continuing to dot along, adding our background, our green tree. Perfect. If you wanted to take an aside while that was drying, if you have enough space filled in for now too, we could always fill in the white in between on our icicles or silver. Oh, okay. So I think other than the swipes on our trunk, that's just the last minor detail aside from filling in everything. So it's just like we did with the garland where you take on your blues, you're just gonna take the white and go smaller in between each of the blues. And it kind of gives that little shine of the icicle. There's gonna be a little background noise for a little bit. My poor husband only just got out of work now. He's worked like a 13 hour shift, so he's oh. getting food. <laughs> It was like a family effort tonight because he got his work schedule shifted around. So my oldest daughter watched the baby and kept him quiet and got him to bed. And <laughs> it's been a group effort here. <laughs> Let 
I think the white too kind of gives it that illusion of it being shiny. Mm-hmm. Cause even photos, it looks shiny, you know, the icicles. All right, so I'm just gonna go back to filling in the greens. And the last thing that we would have to do is put the final highlight swipe on the trunk area and then erase the lines. And then just, I usually wait 24 hours to varnish it. So I'm not sure, depending on what you use for varnish. Or like with resin, I don't even know yet. I only just got resin to try. But in case you lose me again, that's that will be the final touches. Did they lose me already? Are you no, still with no, me? No, okay. we're here. Okay. <laughs> And give me a cup of coffee and I just keep talking. Sorry. <laughs> go, go, go. Yeah, I am loving the way this is turning out. Uh oh, Elizabeth had to go. It's 2.40 a.m. Oh, my gosh. Well, thanks for sticking with us. Um, we really appreciate you joining, Elizabeth. You have an, a nice evening. Uh oh, we lost you again, Miranda. Oh, dear. Yeah, let me go back over to Facebook and tell her we lost her again. All right, I'm gonna just switch back over to, to mine then and keep us going. And if Miranda's able to join us, uh, we'll come back. But I'm almost done with mine. How's everybody, how are you guys all doing with your trees? Are you guys um, pretty much? Sorry. Oh, all right, there we go. <laughs> my, my husband's here telling me that it's my Wi-Fi card because sometimes my laptop decides to cut out, but our hard line, hard line into the house is still going. Like we still have internet, but it's my laptop. Uh huh. Anyways, I'm sorry. Where where were you leaving off? <laughs> um, I was just filling time. I was just saying that, uh, asking everybody how they were doing on their tree. I'm pretty much finishing up I've got my icicles done and I'm just filling in some extra dots you know yep to kind of fill in yep I'm pretty much just filling in the green until my swipe is still pretty wet so i don't want to go over it yet with the highlight yeah mine looks it's maybe close to where i could do it but i would be risking it if i did it now <laughs> i think it just depends on how much paint you put on mm -hmm. was your husband helping you out with your technica technicals tonight uh he was down here for a little while but he went upstairs once we kind of got started gotcha yeah he's a great guy he's super helpful <laughs> he's a he's an angel really i kind of lucked out there <laughs> we've been married over 40 years you guys we'll be married oh. We'll be married 41 years in March. And those are the official years. We had some years before that. So, you know, it was the 70s. So that's really. fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> My husband probably would say it feels like being married to me that long. <laughs> <laughs> uh. 
Oh, gosh. He loves me. I know he does. <laughs> Anyone that can put up with having barrels and crates of rocks all around the house like I do or he, I mean at times I've been worried that I was gonna our studio used to be upstairs and I was worried I was gonna collapse the second floor because I had so many stones upstairs <laughs> Just bins and bins I mean I was pulling 40 pound bags off the beach until my back started bothering me and now he comes and I just call him and say hey can you carry my bags <laughs> I collect them all and you can carry them. <laughs> That's funny. It's how we make a team, right? Exactly. <laughs> Who else is going to indulge your silly passions? Exactly. I think he's hoping that if we buy a house soon and move, that the rocks are staying here. Oh, yeah, you're not going to be able to carry all those out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Gail says that she has tons of rocks, paint, and yarn, LOL. Her hubby is great, too. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I think I got blessed because he his... My husband has an affinity for electronics, which yeah. tends to be all in one conglomerated system. Mm -hmm. so he has a nice little office with his gigantic computer. But other than that, he doesn't have a lot of stuff around. So yeah. I took over the rest of the space. <laughs> well, I tend to encroach. I have to actually caution myself because if I, if I let it get out of control, I would have every surface filled with something and, <laughs> you know, every kind of like nook and cranny counted for yeah but my husband's a musician so he has a little music studio you know that he that's his passion he loves to do that kind of thing that's awesome <clears throat> what kind of instruments does he play he plays a guitar okay great My sister learned how to play guitar by bartering painting. She painted some, a guy said he was looking for someone to paint the walls in his home so he could rent it out. And so he, he offered guitar lessons because she said she would paint. So they bartered and. <laughs> well, that's a good way to get some lessons. So um, Anastasia's kitty made an appearance. Oh, <laughs> She's getting lonely. And Gail says, encroach, she loves that, LOL. She's guilty of that. Um, and then Janice says she has a great friend that helps her carry her rocks. That's neat. That's now, awesome. Miranda, uh, Anastasia says that it froze again, but I it's looking okay to me. Anastasia, is it still frozen for you? Miranda, because I'm seeing her. She's looking good to me. Yeah, I'm moving back and forth. Yeah, yeah, I see you. I have a friend that collects from the same beach that I do, and she actually uses a sled. Oh, really? Yep. She'll pull that's, a sled. <laughs> that's collecting a lot of rocks. I don't live where I'm in Colorado, so I don't have a place to get rocks. I got to go um, to the landscaping yard. I just haven't got there yet. I see a lot of people having a lot of luck with that, though, and good prices and not like they let them have yeah. their pick of which rocks they want. And Yeah, I might have to go see what I can find there because I would love to paint on some rocks but um, I just don't have access to them yeah I've really gotten into I got one of the molds from the yeah happy and, Diamond company. Mm -hmm. yeah and um, I bought some I think we used gypsum the first time but I mm -hmm. bought some molding cement that's a little more pure and so I I've been making the rocks out of that too. Somebody asked me the other day, how are you getting such perfect rocks? <laughs> I'm making them, but <laughs> yeah, you know, I think it's good for especially people who are landlocked and don't have the capability to go anywhere. And then you always get a perfect stone every time, especially for the mandalas. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah, I am. Uh, I got one of the molds too. I haven't tried it yet. I got some of that. I don't know what it was called. Ultra Cal something or other. Oh yeah. That's the gypsum. Yep. Okay. And I, I haven't 30. tried it yet. What's that? The Ultra Cal 30. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. I just ordered it from Amazon or wherever. And um, I'm going to have to try it because that I would like to do that. That might be nice since I don't have access like, you know, like you were saying. So well, and hers is really good, too, because it has a, I'm trying to see if I have one sitting around here. I don't know if you can see, but it has a, must have a little point in the mold because it yeah. puts your center dot down for you. Yeah. You know, and I had been looking for a mold. Um, I'd been looking for all kinds of molds, and I hadn't found one that I really liked that was the quite shape. I'm going to make my own. With the polymer clay, I made a lot of molds at a different for different purposes. So I'm going to probably try making my own because I'd like a certain shape, but yeah, that's a great idea. I think Lydia does too. She makes her own Lydia May. Yeah. She buys it and hand molds her own too. Yeah. She's got some nice wood ones that she's been making too. Yeah. I, um, I've been looking at wood ones too. So we're always on the scout for something. Yeah. fun. <laughs> No, there's a lot of people. I forget which group it is on Facebook. They're doing a lot of record albums and yeah. CDs, and I always find that a difficult surface to paint on. What's a difficult surface? The records. Yeah, I feel they probably feel it was something first that I'm just not aware of. But you know, you have all the grooves and the. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I actually was at the thrift store. Um, the thrift store that's by my house just recently reopened. They had a big fire and then they were out for a long time and they recently reopened and I bought a few records and um, I'm going to try painting on those too. Fun. <clears throat> ah, I'm stuck. Okay. So where are we at? We're all going bug eyed from filling in the dots. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm pretty much as far as I can go unless I start going really small and then I it's going to be a lot more fill work yeah I think I'm pretty much I'm pretty much done how's everybody else doing how are our daughters out there doing oh that sounds so familial <laughs> <laughs> I think my swipes are dry enough now that I'm going to go for it and try to put the highlight on top. Okay. So I'm using, I don't know what I did with my rich espresso. I just have a metallic iced espresso, but it's just a glittery paint. But you can use even just a lighter brown, tan, khaki, or even white if you want, but or mix it with a little bit of the raw umber that you used. Yeah, I'm just mixing mine from my brown and a little bit of white to make a lighter shade and we use the largest dotting tool to make the swipe so i'm sizing down a little bit because i want the highlight to be smaller and not just cover over what we did and i'm starting i start like you're going to dot in the center of a dot and then just drag it out as far as it'll go to just kind of put a little bit of highlight on it And mine only just barely are crossing. So I'm just going to leave it like that before I mess it up. That's one of the things that I've always had a hard time with either having to back off, you know, like don't keep fidgeting with it. You're going to have to redo it completely. Or do I want to add more dots to that one section? Nope, I shouldn't have done that, you know. <laughs> just have to back off sometimes and less is more. Okay. okay, I am. Um, I'm going to show people where I'm at, Miranda, because I think I'm. I think I'm done. I think I'm done.
Yeah, I see you on the screen only. <clears throat> oh, you did? Yep. I. It's been you since I came back. Oh no, I'm sorry about that. I should. I no, needed no, to make you. Feel that's totally okay. fine. <laughs> oh, All right. So here's mine. The only thing I wanted to share with you guys about the cardstock is um, I did use a chalk pencil for my outline, and then I used just an art eraser to um, get my lines up. Yeah, wow. so you can see that that won't mar the paper um, and it'll get it'll get your lines up. So you can do something like that to get rid of those lines. And um, I think it turned out nicely, even though uh, I didn't use the exact traceable. I used, um, you know, just a just a, a triangle shape. Um, and I think it turned out it turned out nicely. So I'm really pleased with that. So, Miranda, I'm going to go back to you and make okay. you the presenter. There you are. Here I am, all blurry. <laughs> I don't know why it still looks blurry to me. Can you see mine? I can see it. Yep. Okay. See it. So mine, I can't, because I did pencil, I'm going to have to erase it after everything is dry. And then I just usually take a, like a light brush and just brush the clippings away, the rubbings away. Um, but that's also the beauty of using the etching tool that I was saying, if I wasn't so concerned about getting excited and poking through the canvas in front of you all, <laughs> I probably would have used that where I can just scratch on here like this. Mm -hmm. And then I just take a little bit of water or even when I varnish it, they go away. So I almost don't have to put in any effort to get rid of the lines afterwards if I just etch it on like that. Oh, okay. So you can see the water. It goes away right away. Yeah. But I, as far as the pencil, I will have to erase that. And I don't like the red, the pink erasers. I think they just smudge. So no, I, no, yeah, yeah. An artist eraser or the mechanical pencils, they have a white end eraser. I'll yeah. use that after the fact and just erase the outer lines. Yeah, I think it's a good investment actually to invest in an art eraser. They're not that expensive. And um, you can find them even at um, like uh, even at like a Target or a um, you know, in any of the craft stores will have them in the art supply section. Um, I've got one that's called a magic rub. And then this other one is the factus. It's actually, I think made for drafting. Um, but any rate, you can find your artist erasers in lots of different places. And that's a good, it's a good tool to have. So Miranda, shall we come back up to our, to say goodbye to everybody? Yes, I suppose. I'm like looking all frazzled off. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was so much fun. I am so excited at how well this went, even with a couple of difficulties. Yeah, I can't tell where I'm looking. Do I look at the camera? Or you? Look at the camera. <laughs> but I'll, we'll trade back and forth. I'm not big on being in front of the camera, but I appreciate you doing this and helping me set everything up and the pattern and everything. This was so much fun. And I hope we can do more of these. This is a blast. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it as well, because I think that um, um, it was really fun to be able to collaborate with another artist that I know lots of our community um, follows and enjoys and um, really, uh, really loves the painting that you do. And so I was really glad that you were able to do this um, with us tonight. And it was so much fun. I hope all of you guys had a good time. Um, I do want you to know we have another one coming up. Yes, on the, the 26th, and I'll be doing this one. This is the gold elegance tree. And um, I just love this. I love the way this one turned out. And it's the same shape that Miranda used, actually. So Miranda's got her pattern in her Etsy shop, and I have this pattern in my Etsy shop if you want that one. And I'll put all the links and stuff, Miranda, to your Facebook page and um, uh, your Etsy shop and all that kind of stuff in the description when it comes live. Okay. And people will be able to find you and um, say hi and like your page and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah. So thanks again, Miranda, so much for joining. It was a, it was a lot of fun and I really appreciate you. Yes. Take Bye. care. Take care. Bye, everyone.